Hi there, it's Yaak Kasari, aka Decisive Sloth here, checking in. And I like to take a look of this this model but which I created, this industrial platform thing here. And uh, I'd like to kind of to give you a preview of the tutorial in Substance Designer, how I created this weathered um, painted metal materials. And, and how I really went about going about the, as, as you know, as a workflow. So let's take a look. Um, at Substance Designer here. Um, those are who are new to Substance Designer, this workflow can be, it, it, it has a bit of a learning curve. Uh, it's a bit different than other packages, but, but if you have done any sort of a node-based uh, workflows before, it, it isn't that, that much different. I mean, you've got nodes here and then you've got noodles coming in and out from the nodes and, and you're building it uh, as a layers. Uh, based on these uh, various nodes, so so yeah, you, when you look at this, you know, when you go in there and you look at this first time, you, oh my god, it's like a noodle soup here. Like you've got these uh, uh, gray noodles and you got those uh, like uh, yellow noodles. Like like it, it's it's like a it looks uh, confusing, especially when you look at the. Uh, some uh, some materials or some stuff which being created by other artists like it's it's like a, it's uh, looks as messy as my desk <laughs> but um, but when you get in there when you start to really dive in it's not that complicated it's it's uh, these guys really it's a very logical workflow and it makes a lot of sense so that that when you start to get used to creating these things it's, it's just gonna go faster and and I say that I would say that for me at least this is a way faster way to work than working with layers in photoshop to create a layered textured uh, layered textures so uh let's take a quick look here um i've got my uh input uh, uh my uh base materials here i've got my masks here um i've got uh these uh, ambient occlusion nodes in here i've got the curvature these are created within a Substance Designer and tutorial I'm going to show you how to create them. You can bake them basically from uh, your low poly mesh and uh, you don't need to use a high poly if you don't want. You can if you want um, if you want to create those uh, in external application like Xnormal. You can you can bake them and then import them here. They will work very they will work just perfectly here. But 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 you don't need to. You can use just Substance Designer. To, especially if you're working with a simple assets such as this. And then I've got uh, some material damage here, edge damages, which I'm using to to filter, to, 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 to mask uh, some effects here. Um, on the top I've got an albedo, uh, sorry, the, the base material. Um, I'm using the roughness metalness for this guy, so uh, the proper name for that is actually a base color, I suppose. Um, so I've got the first, uh, I've got the base color here, which I'm uh, going here, going through here. I'm uh, adding, uh, adding some, uh, all kinds of uh, dirt here, using uh, generators and using uh, masks from, uh, from, for example, these, these edge damage damages here. Um, I'm going here and blending more damages, more uh, dirt in here. As you can see, it just adds stuff more and more and, and adding more and more and then finally going to the final part in here. Uh, by the way, this is actually a tad dark. Uh, I might actually want to adjust it just a moment. I'm going to go on and uh, reduce it a little bit. But I mean this is the great thing about uh, Substance Design that you can really go in here and, and you can tweak this stuff like you can just tweak it. You can't really break this if you are create you created great uh, finished graph and then you want to go oh my this turned out a bit too dark. You just get in here and, and you can do it just like in Photoshop you can go and uh, edit the opacity there. Uh, you can do the same, but but you can do it even more powerfully because nothing is locked. Everything is procedural here. So, and 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 everything in this, everything this guy is completely resolution independent, including these, including these guys, these uh, this diamond plate pattern here. That 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 you know, um, 
you can it is uh, everything is uh, basically a uh, resolution yeah you can go create larger textures if you need and and if you're working for a game studio and then uh, you create it final textures and then the your art director tells okay well you know we want this to be 4k and then you got oh i got just 2k oh my god but i'm here it's no problem you can change that because everything is yeah everything is procedural i can actually take a quick click of the diamond plate thing so the diamond plate pattern is actually a material which i created earlier it's actually over here and and this is actually the the preview i can actually go here right click and go to uh i think there's explore somewhere just a moment i'm trying to find how to do that it's actually expand uh not expand um you can open reference sorry yeah so i uh, do you want to load package which contains craft reference yes Open it. So this is the guy which actually um, uh, is the diamond plate. I'm gonna go and uh, maybe you can use a rounded cube for for reference. This I'm gonna right click and view outputs in 3D view. I'm gonna reset my camera. So this is the material for the for the diamond plate pattern here. So I've created this guy earlier to be used. Um, for you know for assets like this uh, it's a great thing to have you you're gonna when you're using substance designer you're gonna build your own library of assets and you're gonna be reusing them so that's really powerful stuff i've got here like um, various things parameters which can actually control different effects i could for example go here and i have this mod thing which i created which is uh you can come in here and start to add you know mud into this um, like for example some uh, some dirt has been you know uh, some people have walked over this and they have brought dirt with their boots uh, what a what a bad people <laughs> should should wash their boots probably but you know you can uh, add it and, and reduce it and, uh, and it's just you know it's awesome it's very exciting stuff when you think about it and the great thing again about this is that when you build a graph, when you build a properly, uh, the graph properly, you can build things like these kind of things. You could even make a switch here and you could expose this parameter. So I could actually bring this parameter over to the, to my, uh, the other asset and then I could control this in, in, you know, in my, um, that, that platform which we were creating so that th th this could be uh, this I might actually do that with a tutorial I could show you how to do that then but you know the great thing about this is that this all updates in all channels at once so when you create it properly you will be able to make it so that that for example uh, here we have albedo uh, oh, sorry the, the base <laughs> I'm always confusing but yeah the base color and then you got the roughness and everything as you see is properly updated there's the, the metallic and as you can see well even if you have a metal plate and you've got the dirt on it the dirt is not considered metal of course so you know it's here sorry actually uh yeah this, yeah, this is metallic and and, and this height uh, the height could be also uh, actually this could be mapped into the height but uh, i found it a bit uh, to be a bit noisy so that's why i left it out from the height but but to add that is no problem it's going to take 10 seconds to put it here if you want but but yeah the uh, diamond plate thing it's like i create it in this way and and i'm just gonna you know for for this time i'm gonna just move it move, move it so that we don't have that we have uh, scratches by the way here as so all also we have some uh yeah we have scratches generated at these little details this is really small uh, details which you're not necessarily going to see but but they're going to be in there and they're going to help to like there's one scratch here by the way when you're taking a look at this you can see that that these guys and these guys are in the roughness channel only so that that they kind of when you're moving the light across it you can kind of see that they are there but they're not too much noisy and then too much like you know because when you're building uh, assets you don't want them to be always like you don't want them to be like hero assets you don't want them to catch attention too much but you want them to be realistic and when you're creating weathered materials you want them to look like they've been worn and used so you have to find a right kind of a amount of detail and an amount of kind of a punch but 
but you want them to be looking generic and and like for example this guy it could be tiled so i also want it to be looking properly tiling texture so that's why i try to use it as a plane and as possible that there's not going to be any weird details which are just going to be repeated over and over again it's just tiling texture so so you know some things to to, to look maybe and and within Substance Designer, again, it's really super easy to make everything tiling because you've got a really powerful procedural workflows in here. I've got also some sand particles in here, small small details you can maybe see like um, here. I'm going to expose it. It's just a little bit, just a tiny bits of like, yeah, here, these guys here. And they are pro also probably mapped. They are not uh, considered metal. They are different. They, they behave differently, but when you really go and like, see it really closely and, and I actually tested this in Unreal Engine and, and yeah it's possible to make out the sand particles if you really look closely but but you know just a small little details to kind of sell your asset so yeah I've got the platform here so then I've saved I basically take the diamond plate mud uh, graph here and I saved that and then I just imported that to to this graph just by dragging and dropping it here and it gave me these uh, outputs, space, color, normal, roughness, metallic, and height, which I just, you know, created there. It's, everything works. So it, basically I've got this already working uh, before I even started to build my uh, platform thing. So just a moment, I'm going to drag, drag and drop my platform here so that we can again see this properly. So I'll go and uh, actually yeah, it upgrade it automatically now. It's really nice. And yeah, uh, so... Um, where we yeah we were looking at this uh, this base color so basically yeah when you look at this it looks uh, kind of nice the base color is we are dealing with of course with the bbr here so uh so in the base color we don't have any uh we don't have any ambient occlusion or any fake highlights or any hide information whatsoever no lighting it's just the base color and 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 i really like to keep my base color textures uh, kind of clean as possible and and then play around with roughness more for for that artistic stuff you know so that that you know when PPR workflow I'm just you know think of this as a kind of a data which you're feeding into the shader the shader in this case called PPR shader so so these maps are nowadays like when you compare it to the legacy workflow these guys are just more like, you know, uh, these guys are data which you just feed into that and, and, and you don't really need to to be that specific when you're dealing with albedo or the base color map. You're just putting the colors in there and, and you're kind of... And, and within, within a Substance Designer it kind of happens automatically. You're automatically kind of making it you know, in a proper way. In the roughness, when uh, when you look at the roughness here, uh, then I've got like way more stuff in here. It looks like crazy, like uh, crunchy, like like uh, when you're doing it in this way, you can start to kind of see it, see it so that these these dark areas here are going to be uh, so sort of smooth, and then when you're doing dealing with the roughness workflow, uh, the dark areas are going to be smooth, and and then the these ones are going to be rough. So in in our case, these um, white areas are maybe the dusty things that because uh, this what this really means is a microservice detail. So that when you have dust on a surface, it's gonna the light is going to diffuse. It's going to not give you a, a bright highlight, but it's going to give you a smooth, like wider, less bright highlight. And that's what the roughness channel will do for us. So that the idea here is that. That some people have walked over this uh, over this platform, and then the paint has worn off from that, exposing the the much more, uh, I suppose, smooth, uh, less rough met metal from the from the base. And then you've got these white areas with the dust collecting and uh, dirt, <coughs> which is obviously going to be less, you know, less reflective. I could actually give you a better example. Maybe we can change the environment to uh, something more like you know uh, uh, maybe we could have a panorama map here we could actually maybe see if it's updated here so maybe this will give us a better view so you can 
Because you really see the power of the roughness, you know, when, you, when you're looking at different, you can see that like some areas are like dusty and like, it really appears dirty. It looks like a, it's really been weathered, it's been used, used. So that the, this all comes from the roughness. Nothing of this detail here comes from the base called, it's, it's a roughness details what we can put into our textures and areas when you're using the metal roughness workflow. Also here you can see that there's this nice like you know something as like maybe some oil has you know fall maybe some people uh, just like oily uh, this kind of industrial environment. Uh, uh, industrial environments are really quite dirty actually. Uh, there's gonna be all kinds of things machines are being moved and 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 maybe this you know it, it just uh, looks pretty pretty realistic here so um i've got that and and uh, i've got the metallic um uh, excuse me i just made a mistake uh, the metal is metal is um sorry it's here why doesn't it work i'm i don't want to do that i'm gonna expose our metal excuse me what's happening here metal uh you want it okay so um, then you got metal. So all the areas which are exposed, which are exposed metal, appear white, and everything else which is not metal appears uh, black. So in worn, worn paint in our case here. So I mean this is it. Uh, it's uh, in total. I'm gonna take a look at the really in detail every node, how I used every every other nodes in here and. Uh, and and i really kind of want to go go into detail here and i'm, I'm going to also take a look at uh, in our unreal engine 4 how we're going to then input the maps uh, in a proper way how we can do that in in unreal engine 4 and uh, I, i'm looking forward to see you there then um it's it's been it's going to be a fun thing to do and it's going to be a fun way to to explore how uh, how these things will look in the final environment so uh it's Yakusari here, Decisive Sloth, and uh, looking forward to see you soon.